When you define a United legend, what do you base it on? Silverware, goals, appearances, longevity, golden moments, a unique style. But what about being with a club through thick and thin, when it really needs you, even when it's going through such a turbulent time that our modern generation can't even conceive of it? Well, in that case, let's talk about a great United legend, whose name you may know even quite well, but you probably know little about. It's about time we honour Joe Spence. Joseph Waters Spence won't get in many Reds all-time greatest 11s. I'm sure a lot won't even be able to name a single year of the 14 seasons he played for us. But as a legend, he's right up there with the best of them. It can be hard to stand out in a side packed full of stars, of winners. But it's even harder when you're the polished diamond in a second division side, simply struggling to exist in interwar football. Yet Joe's name is still fondly remembered by many Reds, even almost 90 years after he left the club. As with most people in the era he was born, the late 19th century, life was hard. It was no harder than up in Northumberland, where young Joe went down the mines at the age of 13 and was conscripted as a machine gunner four years later during the First World War. But growing up playing football as an inside right or centre forward with local club Blutcher Juniors, he scored an astonishing 42 of the side's 49 goals in one season. The boy had talent for all to see. Joe was tough and methodical in his play, starting every game with the same strategy, coming up with three things to test his opponent. First, he would push the ball past his man and run, to test his speed. Next, he would slip the ball inside to test his weaker foot. And finally, he would charge his opponent to see how he took to the physical side of the game. Having tested him, he would then adopt the most suitable of these three methods of beating him and stick to that for the rest of the game. This approach served him well throughout his career. After winning the Army Cup with his battalion, he signed for 1st Division Manchester United in March 1919. After impressing in some unofficial local matches, the Football League started up again in the August. He made his debut against Derby County on the 30th of August 1919, but it took until the fourth game and United's first victory of the season against Sheffield Wednesday for Spence to score the first of his 168 goals, which spanned 510 games for the club. He didn't look back. Also, when taking into account his appearances and goals, remember there was no Poultry League Cup or European group stages or minnows to play in those days. It was either the League or the FA Cup. Every game mattered. Every game was tough. He topped United's goal scorers in his maiden season, of course, with 14. He would go on to top United's scorers' charts in five more seasons, his best being the 1927-28 season, where he scored 24 goals, including two in the Cup. However, those goals and games would not be rewarded with silverware, only a promotion with United in the 1924-25 campaign, after the club was relegated three seasons before. And a lone FA Cup semi-final appearance in 1926, where United lost to eventual winners Man City. It was a tough period for the club, in many ways the toughest, as United were often out of the top flight, financially strapped to the point of almost being liquidated in 1931. The club was saved by J.W. Gibson, he bailed us out, but that didn't stop us being a yo-yo club at that time. We almost dropped into the third tier one season. However, for United on the pitch, the highlight of the age was undoubtedly Spence, whose demon wing play earned him the most common chant from the terraces at the time, give it to Joe. He was so prolific that when he left the club in 1933, he had not only the record of being United's all-time record scorer, but also the club's greatest ever appearance maker. He still finds himself joint seventh with Ryan Giggs for the number of club goals scored, albeit he reached his total of 168 and almost half as many, or in exact terms, 453 fewer games. His goals and appearance records for us would be eventually taken by two other legendary Red Devils, Jack Rowley and Bill Fulks respectively. In 10th place in all-time appearances, and as previously mentioned, 7th in goals scored, Joe Spence has the greatest longevity of anyone in either of the top 10 lists. Joe also managed 5 hat-tricks in United colours, including 1 in a 6-1 win over Liverpool in 1928, and 4 in a game against West Ham. Spence would go on to have spells at Bradford City and Chesterfield after leaving Old Trafford at the age of 34, lifting his lone piece of silverware with Chesterfield, the 3rd Division Championship Trophy North. He was aged 37. His abilities deserved a lot better. He made two appearances for England, debuting against Belgium and then scoring his only goal for his country 11 days later against Ireland. His time spent in the 2nd Division really hampered his ability to earn more caps but his loyalty to United was the most important thing. After the war, Joe was brought back to Old Trafford by Matt Busby in a coaching and scouting capacity. Joseph Walter Spence, locally known as Mr Soccer, passed away on New Year's Eve 1966 at the age of 68. Rest in peace. Please let me know what you think about Joe Spence in the comments below, and if you could be so gracious, like, share and subscribe. Thanks as always for your support.